click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about remote backup systems and we know that how does it affect the transaction commitment and the high availability production on a database management system. We will talk about different remote backup systems on a distributed server or in a network connection and how we can provide the transaction and updation on this particular transaction system. One such system that is loss of non-volatile storage as volatile storage become non-stable if we cannot pretend that system to have all the updates that is maintained by the log records. Now the systems that we have discussed that failure within volatile storage as well as in the non-volatile storage can lead us that it becomes a non-stable one. Now it can suffer from this environmental destruction like the earthquake or heavy rain or anything or it can be in software problem. But we in the sigil time situation doesn't want this type of scenario to happen. We want that a high availability of a system becomes useful when we are having not a centralized one but a remote backup system. So in the remote backup system, there are two sites that is primarily used for this one. The first one as in the primary site where the database, all the access to the database are performed, while the secondary site which is storing the database content. That means the primary site should access the database, fetch it from the remote site or the secondary site with this remote backup system. Now what is the advantage of this remote backup system? The remote backup system goes for that even if the primary site fails for some reason and the disk associated with this primary system, that is the non-volatile storage disk, the volatile storage disk has always failed because of some environmental destruction or any other destruction in a software and hardware manner, the secondary site still remains there which is not connected physically with this primary site but with a network connection. So now the primary site say wants to access a particular database, updated the database and now have failed to commit the transaction. So the update is made to the secondary site as a part of this remote backup system where from it, it can fetch the data directly that at which point the problem has occurred and it will solve the problem by rollbacking the transaction. So how this remote backup system works? It actually works by the transaction while it is accessing the database in the primary site. After each of this checkpoint or after each of this operation on the transaction, it will get the updated result back to the secondary or this remote site. Now the remote style which stored the data as a checkpoint to it as it stores all the log information of the primary site about the updates. Now the logs it is maintaining it will need to update to its part of the database that is its copy of the database so that it can get reflected on the modification that the primary site is making. So in this way the remote backup system works. So how it is performing the primary site is performing all the log records that it is actually updating the database maintaining the log records and the log records are sent via the network to the remote system where the backups are being made. Now the primary system doesn't necessarily always use a remote system as a part of this transaction. Maybe it also happened that the primary system performs all the transaction and the remote system is only there for keeping the backup of the database system. But if it is unable to keep that dynamically, that means while the transaction is performing, say there after a part of the operation the transaction has performed, there is a failure to the primary site. 
So now if it is not maintaining the checkpoints or the log records to the remote system, then it is not a way to have the remote backup system works. So it is no meaning that we are using a remote site but not using that remote site dynamically. So now if we just store the static database from one update to another update and then give the data back to this backup system or this remote one, then it is not a meaningful task for doing so because the transaction will itself no make any updation on this remote site. Now as the transactions are being performed at the primary site and has been transferred to the remote site, so if there the problem in the primary site remains it, the active site becomes the remote site and it can perform the transform on the transactions that it is happening on the primary site. So the availability greatly increased because now even if there is a physical or logical damage to the primary site, it will not hamper the remote site at all. But while designing these systems, we should keep some things in mind so that we can design in a proper remote backup systems. The first one is to store the data in a meaningful manner. Now to store the data in a meaningful manner on this remote system, we should first detect a failure. Now the primary site, if there is a failure, that should be detectable at that point of time by the remote system. See, suppose that the remote system is connected via a network with this primary system, then it is also possible that it misconfigure or misunderstand the connection failure as a failure to the primary site. That means, say for an instance, the network connection get interrupted or there is a problem with the leased line or the dial-up connection with the network itself, but as the data is not being transmitted to this remote system as proper need, then it will configure it and the primary system has been filled. But there the primary system is working properly, only the data cannot be transmitted to the remote system in a meaningful way. So to recover from this problem, we must ensure that there are a lot of, or at least a minimum number of network connections that connect from the remote system to the primary system. So now, when there is a problem with one network line, the other networks will occur and work as its own way. We can apply for a lease line or a dial-up connection, a broadband connection, and all of this connection, at least one of each, to connect with the remote and primary system. The next is the transfer of operation. Now, whenever there a failure is detected within the genuine primary system failure, now this genuine failure can be transferred the data or the access operation permission to the remote system. So now as the primary system gets down or if any failure occurs in this primary system, then as all the updated data and the log records are being maintained by this remote system as a backup, now the remote system itself can perform these updates again to the database system and then continue with the transaction with all the log records that it is having. So now my remote system become my active system as the transfer of operation is being given to the remote system. Now when the primary system will be again repaired or recovered from the error, two of these things can happen. The operation access can be again transferred to the primary system or the primary system itself can behave as a remote system as a backup is stored onto this. Now as the primary system has recovered, we can assume that the primary system is having all the database that is being made just as the way of this old value. Now the remote system can perform as the active one while the primary system can be the remote system and acting as a backup one. Now either we can do this, otherwise we can transform the operational access from this remote to the primary system again by pretending that there is a problem to this remote system and now it is transferring the operation permission to the primary system again. So in this way, the transfer of operation can also be made from one system to another. The third issue that we need to consider is the time to recover. 
Now, whenever the transaction is being filled or it is not completed, then it cannot commit itself until and unless all ROG records can be transferred from the primary system to the backup system. Now, this leads a leading time for commitment of the transaction. That means now my transaction will need a large amount of time because all the log records must be performed by the primary system and then it needs to transfer to the secondary system. Only then the transaction will be considered as a committed one. So now the time to recover will be much higher. Now we can just put this time or reduce this time to recover by connecting a hot spare configuration. So what is a hot spare configuration? This configuration suggested a way or a procedure on which the remote system instantly get an update within log that the primary system is performing. That means whenever there is an entry to the log record in the primary system, at that instant of time, the primary system will transfer the data to this log into this secondary system. Now when the transaction is committed and there is a problem, so by it can delete the previous log records as it is maintaining the checkpoints of every log record for the current execution of operation for the transaction. So the time to recover will be much, much lesser because it doesn't have to search all the log records from the first one to the last one, but it can search from the last checkpoint to till the transaction that it has happened. So in this way, we should reduce the time to recover for a secondary system or a backup system. Now the next one is the time to commit. Whether a log record has been performed by the primary system and it is being transferred the update to the secondary system, then we are considering the transaction to commit. So this is the time to commit for a transaction, that to perform the log into the primary and then transfer it to the secondary one. Now there are three ways to provide this time to commit and configure it in that one. The first one is one safe. What do you mean by one safe commitment? That means the primary records that has only been transferred at all by the transaction to the secondary one, only then it will be considered as a committed transaction. Otherwise, if most of the transactional log records has been performed and transferred to this secondary one, but a few or at least one of them is not transferred, the transaction will not commit. This one save will greatly enlarge this time to commit because one till and unless the secondary system is getting all the log records, the transaction will not be committed. The another variation to this is two very safe. The two very safe includes its two of the site that is the primary site and the secondary or the remote site. If both the sites are maintaining that the log records are being performed from the primary site and also it is being maintained by the secondary site, now it will be considered that the transaction is committed. So the two very safe is also greatly enlarge the time to commit because if there is any failure on either the primary system or this secondary system, then the transaction system will not be committed. Because say suppose that transfer of this network connection is poor or we cannot transfer at that time of moment. But the primary system has performed all the logs successfully. Then also it cannot just transaction commit because two of the system is not involved. Now the next variation that is considered to the time to commit is too safe. Now it is same as this two very safe if both are active for this primary and secondary one. But if one of them are active, then it is considered that either of that, if the primary one is having the log records or the secondary one is having the updated log records, then we consider the transaction to be committed. Now it will reduce the time to commit to a much extent because the problem with the two very safe that both the conditions are required to get the updation and also it is avoiding the data loss from this one safe that if the primary one is having but the not secondary one. So now two very safe is considered as this two safe in contrast with the fewer one to the time to commit. 
Now, several computer systems which allow the centralized as well as the single site systems or this remote backup systems both as a distributed system. Like some centralized systems also use the part of which it is using a site system. Now, it can also produce the remote backing up system by distributing the servers. And another approach for providing this remote backup system is to use remote sites. That means rather than having remote computer system, the websites we can have on this internet, that means we are storing the data into the cloud so that we can have a backup that is remote to the centralized system. So in this way, we can perform this remote backup system by providing either a remote backup computer system or a remote backup computer network or either a centralized and single site client server type. So now we have to configure the remote system in such a way to provide this less time to commit, less time to recover the data that is transferring on operation and finally the detection of this failure. So that is all for the remote backup system. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.